Hello and welcome to your NARSA weekly update for the week commencing Monday the 28th of October 2024. This is the last one that, that I'm going to be recording in October and then we're into November and then it's almost American Thanksgiving and... Ooh, Christmas, basically. So that's the, the year kind of almost done for us here, folks. Wow, it's Gary here again. And, right, okay, I'm going to start here with a little bit of a puzzle question. Like, how can two hard-fought, well-deserved and important victories still make us feel kind of flat? And it's a bit of a rhetorical question because I know the answer to that is because of all the what would you say, to and fro in all the ups and downs that we have endured and an experience that leading up to those two matches. But it's just, ah, you know, it's so unfortunate. It's just the way of the Rangers world right now. And I really wish it would take a turn for the better because it's heavy going, you know, because I think it's one of these ones not to be doom and gloom at all. And I am, I do try to be anyway, like an eternal optimist, especially when it comes to sport. But it's one of these weird things where you just feel like another Kilmarnock performance is just around the corner because that was only just over a week ago, you know, so we haven't completely gotten rid of that. But, you know, hopefully if we can learn from the errors and learn from the experiences, then we go on to bigger and better things in the future. And I truly have no issue whatsoever with our, our European form, but domestically we are just a bag of inconsistency and and I have to say it's it's pretty difficult to watch the domestic stuff the European you know that some of the, the good the better European ones anyway have have been very very nice to watch very attacking very uh, very fluid fluent and and quite attractive to watch but the the domestic stuff phew, man that's like a complete change in mindset and it's it's just kind of dumbed down to the basic essentials and it's it's a heavy it's a heavy load that said there is a great opportunity for us to close the gap on the team directly above us in the league this week and get to the first cup final of the season so it's not like a complete and utter disaster of a season you know when you when you think about it in that respect uh, you know and if so obviously if we were to win both of these matches this week then that would be a big corner turned I hope and I anticipate actually I don't hope and and you know an, an opportunity for the new players to see what it's really like to be part of a successful Rangers team but they've seen what it's been like to be part of an unsuccessful Rangers team so hopefully they've got a wee bit more of a thirst for the positive side rather than the negative side because we can be a bit of a grumpy bunch when we get going and I know you know what I'm talking about so two victories this week and nothing less and let's go Rangers so a wee bit of a of an overview of what Gaz got wrong last week and it was the time difference so what we had I mean I didn't even know that the UK was, the clocks were going back in the UK. So we, we, we missed it. I just, I said the game was going to be at 8, uh, or sorry, that would have been 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but it would have been 11 a.m. And that's not the worst of it though, because my sister Debbie told everybody the game was at 8 o'clock on Saturday and it was actually 9 o'clock on Sunday. And then she sent a clarification email from Cancun and that was no better. So we had a few folks show up here and the uh, you know eight o'clock yesterday morning and I wasn't down at the pub till probably about quarter to nine to get it all set up so yeah I got the time difference wrong last week it's in effect for this midweeks game against Aberdeen and then we're back to normal because the North American clocks go back on Saturday night slash Sunday morning of course our game and the cup semi-finals on Sunday so yep wee bit of a mistake there but not as bad as what Debbie did and I'm gonna just keep on that track okay on to the game segment a wee bit more pleasant to do this this week than it was last week and we'll start with last Thursday's 4-0 brilliant win against Stuart Bucharest or FCSB or SBFC what they're called now but it was it was brilliant, wasn't it? It was actually very easy as well. And I had been saying last week, you know, like this was supposed to be one of the, the groups, sorry, one of the teams we played in the group that was going to be one of the easier tasks, which I thought was quite puzzling because they'd already won, they had already won the previous two games. So it was just one of these one of these things. I mean, even with their disallowed goal, which most people I've talked to said it wasn't a foul on on Jack Butland and, and I kind of see why they would say that but 
I'm a positive guy and this was a positive thing for Rangers so there was contact not enough contact to to merit the foul the referee jumped the gun a wee bit by blowing the whistle too early before the guy put it in therefore VAR doesn't get involved and we got away with one there how many times have we not got away with stuff like that in the past so does it even itself out and uh, I don't really know if I want to say it like that but it certainly gave us an idea but as I was talking to Alec in the club about yesterday we would still have went on to win that game. We were superior superior to them in every area of the pitch. It was an entertaining game. We did really well. We did the right things right. You know, we get the opening goal quickly. And, you know, Tom Lawrence, you know, in and out, Tom Lawrence, he's injured again, I think. And that was that was brilliant. And it set us up for a great night. And I didn't think they were terrible, to, to be honest. But I just thought we outclassed them overall. And I just wonder why we can't seem to do that domestically. Go out with the same level of energy, enthusiasm, invention, you know, industry and, uh, you know, any other word that you can think of there that would give us a bit of a positivity. We'll see what it looks like at Pataudry on Wednesday and see whether we've actually got that in us or not. And we just, and domestically, we just don't seem to have had that, you know, that real grit for, for a number of years now. It feels like, you know, maybe, I mean, there's the odd, the odd decent performance and such, but nothing to really write home uh, around. But anyway, back to the European game. Uh, we're in a good position now after... After three games, we've got six points. You know, we're only three points off top spot. And the the pundits out there say that if we get nine points from our eight games, we'd been with a good chance of, of qualifying, at least for the playoffs. I'm, I'm kind of greedy. I'd like to just go and get more and more and more points, more money in the bank, more, you know, hopefully more points in terms of coefficient for the for the country. And, you know, it's a couple of less games if we if we don't have to get into the playoffs and we go straight into the quarters. So let's keep it going. I mean, it's been a, a good campaign. Some some tough games coming up here in the next wee while, so we'll just see how that goes. But really good to see us going for not stopping at all and, and you know, giving the goal difference a wee bit of a boost in that league format too. On the positives, I thought the performance, the score, the reaction to the, the disastrous... Kelly defeat was was brilliant. The fans showed up. And for some reason, I just had expected a whole bunch of blue seats to be there. But I don't know if people had already purchased the packages or they just decided this is the actually this is actually the only time we're going to get any you know any real entertainment. So I'm just going to go along anyway. I'm not sure. But it was great to see the fans there, great to see them sticking around and really backing the team. And just great to see the overall passion and energy and endeavour from the team, as I've said. And, and you know, we, and Igaman, or Igman, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, getting his first goal, which was which was great. That's a big milestone for him. And this Alec Liddell, if you're listening to this, you can just fast forward the next 30 seconds. But Cherney is really growing into his role with us now, isn't he? I mean, he's had, he's had, He's had a few stink bombs of games, as has the whole entire squad this season, and the season's only in its infancy right now, really. Um, but he's, you know, ever almost ever since he came out and did that very honest, open, forthright interview, saying like, "I can hear everyone. I'm trying my best. I, I should have done that. I'm not. I'm not in all, all, all cylinders." Very, very honest assessment of where he was at. It seems like that's given him a wee bit of confidence, and he's he's really contributing. And of course, it was the same yesterday against St Mirren. So yeah, we just the positives is we just kind of perform in Europe, don't we? And you know, Leon aside and even then we, we, we kinda just shot ourselves in the foot against Leon, especially towards the end of the first half there. But you know, we, we have a good reputation in Europe is always something to look forward to with confidence as we go forward and it's it's just looking healthy overall. On the negative side, I'm honestly not going to be that greedy. A four 0 European victory, whether it's home or away, is great for us and great for Scottish football overall. So no complaints whatsoever on this one. In terms of stats Apparently we had fifty four percent possession. Felt like more than that, I have to say, but maybe that's maybe that's true. Twelve shots on goal with seven on target, which is a pretty good return there. Versus they had seven shots on goal with one on target. And on the referee watch, I don't actually recall being annoyed with him at all. And he obviously did his wee error at the beginning there. Certainly set us up right. You know, they, they would have obviously had that goal of a lead and then that would have been a wee bit of a different complexion on the game, but he did he did his job, he did what he thought was right, and, and we move on from there. So yeah, that was good. On the second game, that was of course yesterday's 2-1 victory at home to St Mirren. Another another tough watch, I have to say, especially the first half. And and I thought overall, actually I thought overall it was a, a very entertaining game. I, I really did. I thought St Mirren came out, we'd actually said just before the, the game kicked off, here we go, another 
you know, 11 men behind the ball situation. Nope. Simon came right out and went right at us, had a very, very high line and were pressing us at the back. There was one point we could hardly get out of our own half in the very beginning of the game. And I thought the fair play to St Mirren, not just because of from Paisley, which is a great thing, of course, but they, their team got a reaction from uh, from their last game, which was a 4-0 doing from, from Hearts in the Hearts' first win of a domestic season. So... You know, they did, a, they did a couple of really good chances and we... If I was a Simon fan, I would be frustrated. And, and I guess these provincial teams don't care. You know, they want to show up against the big teams and do the best against the other teams, accumulate and amass the amount of points they need to stay in the league and then just kind of go and see what happens during the season. But when they're actually only genuinely putting in a superhuman effort against ourselves and maybe that mob from the, the East End, that... I don't know, I, feel, I would feel like I was getting cheated in other games, you know, and, and maybe that's just me, but it's just it's just a, a, bit, of a, a bit of a mess. Their forward, the, the fellow, who was it, Olus, Olusayana, Rania, or whatever his name was, he just ragdolled <laughs> our defence, didn't he, the whole game, I thought he was brilliant, and that's the sort of presence that we want from our forwards, you know, like just getting in about it, being an absolute pest and a nuisance. Yes, he tired a wee bit towards the end, but... You know, the, the shift that he put in and the impact that this fella had was, was pretty inspirational to see and good for him for, for doing that and also for missing the chances that he missed as well. Thank you. Um, and I don't think, honestly, we'll be talking or even thinking about this game. That game's done now. We can move on. It wasn't brilliant. It wasn't our worst. And, and we'll, we'll see how, how it goes. But overall, yeah, I thought they I thought they, they made a game of it and it was, it was kind of good. And our, our two goals, I thought, were excellent. And, you know, we came a cropper again at a set piece again, which is not too much of a shocker. But we did what we had to do. And I watched the highlights back just before I started recording and just in case there was anything I had missed. And honestly, we weren't in any danger really at all the last 15, 20 minutes. And I was just having a bit of a laugh in the pub. So I wasn't getting myself super um, super stressed about, about the game at the end. But I, I, I recall feeling fairly comfortable towards the end, you know, just going... I'm more confident that we would be getting a third and maybe a fourth than than they would have a chance of getting that as well. So, so good for the squad, good for the team for doing that, good for Philippe Clamont putting a, a winning team together there. It was pretty comfortable. So on the positives, obviously nice for us to get back to winning ways and in the league. It was a good opportunity to rest some players with this games or this week's games, I should say, in mind. I think that's a pretty smart move by by the manager, as I mentioned. Earlier, in terms of of the Stuart Bucharest game, the the Ch like Cherny is is really. I mean, he's he knows where to be when, and he knows how to put chances away as well. He's not as one dimensional as I, as I was kind of thinking he was when he was having some of his stinkier games. But it was it was a good game, you know, very very good goal. He should have got two, of course, but uh, you know he'll take the one again and, and keep going. I thought Raskin and Barron are playing really well together, aren't they? It's nice to have a midfield again, isn't it? Wow, what what a change that is. But doing really well, Raskin uh, specifically was a bit of a standout yesterday. Did exceptionally well, and I don't know how to pronounce it. Was it Casan Wiro? Casan Wirjo? Wiro? You know he's he's turned out to be a fantastic signing for us. Play left back, left right back. He gets slotted in the centre of defence when proper who had a nightmare, didn't he? <laughs> I've had games like that, so I'm not going to be too hard on him. But yeah, he got he got he got the rough end of of that game. I I can say with confidence. But anyway, Casuero is is proven to be a real asset for us. You know, really, really good overall play. One of the negatives, the, the stuffiness of the game, certainly the first half, I thought was was really tough to watch. It was just we were. Is it the European hangover again? Maybe it is. I'm not hundred percent sure, but that was that was a rough go. Their goal, I thought. I thought Butland had a good shout for a foul, but VAR said no. So I guess that's. That's a thing, and um, other than other than that, I think overall, you know, it was it was alright. You know, with seventy three percent possession, sixteen shots and goal with six on target, versus nine shots and goal with four on target, so that tells you the chances that someone were creating. Uh, on the referee watch, uh, another new guy. I actually didn't even catch his name. Usually, I do a bit of research to get his name, but I, I didn't <laughs> today. So, but another new guy it looks very very young, and I thought. He did well. Do you know what he did that annoyed me? And I kept going on about this when I was in the pub yesterday watching the game was at the very beginning of the match, you know, within the first five or ten minutes, whenever it was, he, he starts to try and assert his authority on the game and, and he gives Yefty the gears and the whistle and the move it, 
you know, for, for labouring on a throw in, which I don't even think he was doing, to be perfectly honest, you know, but he's just like, move it. And then he basically proceeds to let the St Murn players away with it every single time, especially when they were at one each and, and they're, you know, they're not exactly in a hurry to take a bye kick or a, or a throw in or a corner or anything like that, you know, so you need to be consistent in the game, man, come on. But other than that, you know, I thought I thought um, he, he did okay. He kind of ended the game confusing, didn't he? Because I thought it would have been a penalty for Dessels at the very end, and then it went to VAR, and then he just blew the final whistle anyway. Not complaining about that. I mean, I don't think he would have done that if it was a if it was a you know an absolute literal game changer where we had a chance to to win the game or a chance to get a draw or something like that. But he just. I think he just gave up. I think he's like, ah, yeah, no, that's enough for me. Um, but other than that, and since he's new, he's going to get the benefit of the doubt. He's going to get a 7 out of 10. I think if that was a more established referee, he would have got a 6 for that, just for, for the, the, the annoying part of just the inconsistency in the game. Two games this week, as I mentioned earlier, one in the league and one in the League Cup. Aberdeen away. This will be Aberdeen's biggest game of the season by a mile, and that includes going to Sharkhead last weekend. And they, we know for a fact, they'll be very, very up for it. Absolutely up for it. So that's Wednesday, October the 30th. And that is a 4pm Eastern Standard Time kickoff. That's 8pm in the UK due to the time change. And honestly, folks, I have no idea what's going to happen in this game. Are we up for a fight? Are we up for a battle? Are we up for actually trying to figure out in-game how we need to act and react and adjust and course correct and... And, and not get the game running away from us? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. More often no, it feels like, um, but I'm probably just catastrophizing a wee bit in terms of some of the challenges that we faced this season and not faced them very well. I would love to go there and win. I don't know that a draw would be an absolute disaster other than letting the mob from the East End probably go a further two points ahead, uh, which is obviously not good at this stage in the season, but... We, I say we go for the win and we, we do what we need to do to win the game and then that's a statement victory. Our second game is at Motherwell. Sorry, it's not at Motherwell, it's against Motherwell at Hamden, our kind of second home for this past season. That's Sunday the 3rd of November, 10am Eastern Standard Time. We're all back to normal again in terms of the time difference between North America and the UK. It's a 3pm UK kickoff. And do you know, I think this is probably, and I don't, I don't mean to sound super dramatic or melodramatic or anything like that but I think this Motherwell game specifically you know the Aberdeen game will be the Aberdeen game but this Motherwell game I think is going to be make or break for the season if we've got a cup final to look forward to six weeks after that six-ish weeks after that you know that gives us an opportunity to be excited and then kind of take care of the games in between an opportunity for silverware like there's there's a lot of things to be really really grateful and thankful for if we get through that game if we don't get through that game and by the way they just got spanked yesterday by the mob from the east end so we should be absolutely going and doing the same thing so let's just see let's see how that looks but i i don't think it's too it's too exaggerating to say that this is make or break if we were to get two very bad results this week two defeats and then phew, that's a tough gig for this squad and this team and this manager, quite frankly. So I guess we'll I guess we'll just need to see how that goes. Positive mental attitude, folks. I think we are going to win it. I thought RTV was good uh, yesterday. You no know, issues or hassles uh, with RTV, and the commentating was good, and, and no hassles technically or anything like that. There's a wee bit of buffering, I think, over in London, but I think it was just internet issues over there. Speaking of London, and that's London, Ontario, of course, I did get a shout out from Lorraine Spence, who, as you know, is our communications director here at NARSA, and she is also now the newly appointed vice president of of, Nar of NARSA, sorry, of the London Rangers Supporters Club. They had their AGM yesterday, and Eddie was re-elected as president, and Dave Schillinglaw for secretary-treasurer. So I think overall, congratulations, well done. Thank you for continuing to champion the needs and desires of Rangers over there in London, Ontario. Very, very good congratulations to Eddie, Lorraine, and David. And just another one I mentioned that a wee bit earlier, my sister Debbie and her lovely husband Andy, our former social media guy at NARSA here, are celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. The actual anniversary of that was back in June, but they are down in some sort of... Well, I tell you what, you get to make up your mind, but they're down in Cancun celebrating for the week, all inclusive. The place looks beautiful and, and they're having a great time. And it's an adults-only resort. So when I hear adults-only... 
and I don't want to sound immature here, I really don't, I hear swingers. That's what I hear. You know, I understand that some people don't want to be annoyed with kids splashing in the pool and all that kind of thing. I think that's a fun part of going on holiday and just seeing you know, all the kind of madness that the kids can create when they're there. So then I think swingers, okay, that's fine. That's just me and maybe my depraved mental attitude here. And then I ask her what the name of the hotel is and the hotel is called Secrets. Come on. And that's not just me, is it? Please let me know if it's just me just having my mind in the gutter. I have no idea what they're up to when they're down there, but happy anniversary again. And well done and well deserved on that holiday. It looks like a great time. Thankfully, we've been in contact every day and they're having a great time down there. Uh, there was no women's team action, of course, international break this past weekend, which is probably just as well, I think. You know, as they had a real, a real bad slide the last kind of three, four weeks of of the season there, you know, that was three draws and four games. I mean, that's a lot of points. That's six points. And now they're not on, on top of the league anymore. And I don't know how, I don't know how it turned so quickly, you know, just it, it, they were flying for the majority of the time and then just kind of regressed in some way. I'm not 100% sure, but they'll be back in action this coming weekend. And then we'll see what that looks like as we go forward. Another shout out for the Narco Curry weekend, which of course, as you will know, if you've been listening over the last couple of weeks, is in London, Ontario. So it's nice to see that they've got the team completely organised there and ready to go and support the event. The itinerary roughly Thursday the 13th of February, Scott's Corner Pub, 14th Valentine's Day of course, a brewery tour, who doesn't want to take their love on a brewery tour on Valentine's Day and then the London Knights ice hockey game, Saturday's the, the Hearts Rangers game, it might be moved to the Sunday depending on European commitments and that's at the Scots Corner of course the home of the London Rangers Supporters Club and then there's Saturday night's the curry and then the Sunday is the hangover event or they call it the farewell event I think we all know what that is there in terms of a convention update 227 days folks it's going to be in the hundreds here before we know it 227 days and 32 weeks until we descend upon Kissimmee in Osceola County Florida and I cannot wait June the 12th to the 15th at Omni Orlando at Champions Gate. Uh, did you see, if you're back home listening to this and you were at Ibrox yesterday, at halftime, did you see our advert on the jumbo screens at halftime? They actually had a wee typo on it. It was supposed to say nasa.ca, which is our website, but it said nasa.co. I'm not sure why. I don't know if they thought co.uk or whatever. I'm not sure, but I don't know that anybody would be, you know how to find us. And, and if you don't, get in touch with me and I'll set you straight. But it was great to see that. And as I mentioned last week or over the last couple of weeks, there's more to come for that over the next wee while in terms of the LED screens early in the new year, in terms of the LED screens that are on the outside of Edmiston House and such as well. So the club are really stepping up and stepping in for us here. And it's great to see and really happy with that. Of course, we do have John Brown, Mark Haitley organised. We do have, an, I'm, I'm I'm actually, I, was, I thought I was going to get this done at the weekend. Uh, I'm working on a communications plan to start to announce the things that we can announce over the next wee while to kind of start to make it feel like a convention. Again, because it's, I mean, I know, I know I talk about it every week, but not everyone listens to the to, to the, the podcast of course but they'll, they'll read the emails that we put out and such like that so so I'll hopefully I don't know if I'll get to it tonight but this week at some point the, the communications plan will be done from next week we will make an announcement in terms of the entertainment for the Friday night Tam Plunkett Blue Night and then we will start to get some legends announced over the next wee while as well so please if you are procrastinating on your tickets or hotel bookings please 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 get that booked that makes our it gives us a bit more certainty about who's coming and what the numbers look like and what we can afford to, to put on in terms of an event and what we can't and such. You know, it's very, very important for us from a, a budgeting and planning and management perspective. So please don't delay on that. As you know, the, the hotel rooms are out for booking. The, the, the tickets are out for booking. And I did see an email today, which I assume includes the the contract for the golf. So we'll get the golf announced next week for you folks and then we'll move forward from there. I'm not going to give up on these NARSA convention stories because I really think we're onto something and we just need a couple of people to write in and then folks to go, oh, I remember that. And my experience was this or this is what it looked like or this is what we had going on or, or whatever it is. So if you've got any stories, even if you just want to phone me and I'll take the details down and I'll tell the story afterwards, don't worry about writing, you know, a big novel or anything like that. Just give me the highlights and, and I can do the rest for you and then we'll, we'll take it from there. So yeah, that's the convention update. And speaking of convention update, we did have our bi-weekly meeting with Rangers last week. Oh, do you know what happened? Do you know, technology is great when it works, isn't it? And then when it doesn't work, that's when you're thinking, oh my 
God, this is awful. So we have a regular bi-weekly meeting. Everything's going okay in the beginning. And then my computer decides, oh, by the way, I'm just going to shut down right now. I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. But it freezes first. And then it unfreezes. Then it freezes again, just to give me a little bit of warning. And then everyone's kind of like, oh, you're frozen, Gary. And I'm talking away as if I'm, you know, just having a great time. And it's frozen. Then I go into my phone. They can't hear me when I'm on my phone. I log back out, log back in again. It put me right off my stride, it put me off my game and we didn't get quite as much accomplished but ultimately it was just, you know, a bit of an update about what we're going to be doing over the, over the next wee while in terms of convention planning and preparation. So we're, we're in good shape with them but it was just annoying, really, really annoying for that to happen because I usually don't have technical glitches like that. I'm very fortunate with the strength of, of my Wi-Fi signal when I'm here and... And, you know, just my equipment works. I pay good money for it and I look after it. So it was a bit of an anomaly day, but not my best work, I have to say. In terms of communications for this week, I checked not long before I started recording and the the Jails Guide wasn't up for this week, so I'm really not sure what's coming up. But what I would imagine is that probably tomorrow there will be a loan review. I imagine tomorrow there will be the press conference for the Aberdeen game for Wednesday. Wednesday, of course, we do have the Aberdeen game. Thursday, probably not a lot, I'm not sure. Friday, I imagine, would be the press conference for the Motherwell semi-final and not much on Saturday, is it? I think I think maybe the women's team are playing on Saturday this week. I can't remember who against, my apologies. And then on Sunday, of course, it's us against Motherwell and we will do what we need to do. And other communication, you might have seen last week on the, on the Rangers website, actually today on the Rangers website, they promoted or boosted our article about the tickets being on sale for NARSA too. So if you go into the website and go into the news section, you'll see our article front and centre there, which is great to see. I love that, you know, and, and we had, I had a hand in, you know, developing the poster and such, or commenting on the development work that was done on the poster. So it's a little bit of history there and it's kind of nice to see that sort of thing. Kind of cool. Uh, anyway, on the, on the Rangers website, last week you you may have seen that they published the recent minutes of the fan advisory board meeting that was held I can't actually remember when it was held but fairly recently they, they do turn around the minutes pretty quickly and lots of information there what I'll do is I'll put the the link in the blurb for today's pod and you can go take a peek at that it's just a pdf document you can download it and sift through it but yeah John Gilligan the interim chairman was there Greg Marshall and Natalie Nairn was there too and lots of good stuff there I think one of the some of some of the key things not to, to spoil the, the surprise or anything but the, the the interim chairman said that the logical order that they are targeting will be to appoint a Scottish based chairman first so that excludes Dave King I guess <laughs> and Alistair Johnson I guess and the, and then the CEO would come on the heels of that. It's in black and white, it's in writing, that's what the intent is for right now. Of course, one or both of those processes could go faster or slower, that might change the order around, but the intent and what they seem to be targeting and working towards is the chairman first and then the CEO. There was a lot of talk about the Copeland Road stand and just how they missed you know, they missed they missed a lot of opportunities. Obviously, they missed the, the management of the, the, the actual project itself. I wish they had asked. I'm a pretty good project manager. I've been for about 30 years or so, and I could have given them a wee bit of guidance and advice. But the, the things that they really missed was opportunities to truly communicate better and opportunities to say, yep, that didn't go well. We were only away from home for, you know, two, three games. It wasn't that big of a disaster. Inconvenience, yes, but, you know, it wasn't the worst thing that we ever went through. You know, let's get a bit of perspective. But they missed the whole point of saying we now have world-class disabled facilities and really showcasing that. I think that, I should say, that I think that was a real missed opportunity. It's not too late, of course, because it, it's there, but, you know, to maybe do like a drone type thing or something like that would have been a great idea to say, this is what it used to be like. This is what the disabled fan experience used to be like. This is what it's like now. Look at this. And I think that would be a, a really good story to tell. And, and I hope that they do take that opportunity and, and do that. And, and through that conversation, it kind of morphed into, you know, the way that we don't really truly stand up for ourselves in public like that mob from the East End do. They're just always bleating and complaining about absolutely bloody everything. And we had an opportunity, especially when they came out and said, no fans at Shark Head because Rangers won't be ready in this by, by January. They can't guarantee it. That was a mess. And I think that's real testimony to the fact that we didn't have a, an active 
chairman, we didn't have um, a CEO at all, anyone filling that seat. So we ended up in a situation where it just, you know, the, the communications team are essentially kind of managing things on their own and that's not a very fair position for them to be in. They're just conduits of the information. But a simple statement to come out and say, that's actually not what happened. We could guarantee it. They just decided they don't want any fans here. So that's that. And and guaranteed there will be not be any they will not be any fans of theirs come January. That's fine. You know, something like that. But it's just it's just another faux pas on communications. It's nothing new for this season. And there was also some talk about the ticketing and some of the confusion that's been that's been created on ticketing through the new platforms and the way the European tickets are managed versus domestic tickets and such. Good, good interview, quite, quite a quick read as well, and a good interview, sorry, good meeting, and, and then we'll, we'll figure it out from there. Also on the Rangers website, I uh, October, as you probably know, is, is Black History Month in the UK, and there's a, there's a really good article there with Captain James Tavernier, and you know he opened up on his pride at being the first black captain of Rangers, which I think is very, very poignant, and I think it's something that is another feather in his cap or string to his bow about how impactful he has been for us over his tenure and you know of course he was named club captain 2018 by Steven Gerrard and he's creating history has created history you know in terms of his goal scoring in terms of his assists and such don't think about this season's James Tavernier think about the previous seasons James Tavernier's um, but he says, and I, I won't, I won't read everything out, but I did want to read just the wee beginning part. And there you could go look for the article; it's really good on the website. And he said, I see it as a responsibility for everyone, and that I need to lead by example. What the club does with everyone, anyone, it includes every diversity on the planet. It's about me being a role model for everyone, but it would be inspiring for young black kids to see me in that position that I am and hopefully it can inspire them to push on and make their dreams come true. Racism still exists. It's important for me to be a role model for my kids and be there for them if anything happens in life. I always say to them that every day is about how you apply yourself, put yourself in good positions, keep yourself away from bad situations and then life should always have a path. And it kind of really made me think, you know, you, you kind of forget at times, especially in the melee that we're in right now in terms of this topsy-turvy roller coaster season, that this is a human being here and a very fantastic servant, a very fantastic, that's not very good English, but a fantastic servant to Rangers Football Club over his tenure. Yes, we're frustrated with him right now. I'm sure he's frustrated. I, I heard Tom, Tom Miller on Rangers TV yesterday say, that he's coming up for 33 pretty quick as well. For some reason, I had him a bit younger. I don't, I don't, I've no idea why, so don't, don't even dig me up about that. But, you know, he's, he's, he's a great guy and he's been a fabulous captain for us. He's been through some trying circumstances and situations that many other captains haven't been through. So, so good for him for standing up and, you know, and marking this poignancy of being the first black captain of Rangers. I think that's a, that's a fantastic achievement for him. A quick reminder of the Rangers International Coaching Convention on the 3rd to the 6th of April 2025 and this for the last time I will say that we have the RF, the, sorry, the RCF, the Rangers Charity Foundation Charity Ball this Saturday the 2nd of November at the Double Tree by Hilton in the Glasgow City Centre. Okie dokie, that will do it for this week, my friends. As always, thank you very, very, very much for taking the time to listen. Please do share it with whomever you think might enjoy it. And please make sure you do tune in next week for some announcements in terms of the convention. Folks, this is a very, very big week for us. I keep saying that every week, but we have an opportunity to really make a statement, a positive statement, please, Rangers. <laughs> and uh, we don't want any of those negative ones. We've had more than enough this season. Thank you very much. And let's just see if we can step it up and, and keep it stepped up and close the gap at the top of the table and make the cup final. I'm kind of biased. I think we deserve it. Take care. And until next week, look after yourself and all the very best. Okay, follow, follow.